Well, now, how exactly do you protect your wealth as you grow old? Let me tell you one secret about life, and I want you to listen keenly. You know, you can be a very hardworking person. You wake up early in the morning, you go out there, you do the hustles and bustles, you make more money. Yeah, after making more money, does not really translate to you being wealthy and also retaining that cash in, cash in future. Let me tell you one secret that you have never heard. Do you know, whenever they talk about net worth, do you know what is a net worth? Net worth. Net worth simply means that what you have absorbed, that what you have retained, that what can say it is yours. When we take the liabilities and the debts that you have and subtract to that what you own, that difference, that what, the absorbability, that is what we call your net worth. And remember one thing, never forget this. The, uh, we call the success of a man is never measured by how high he climbs, but how high he bounces when he hits the bottom. Let me tell you one secret about life, you know. We never measure the wealthy or net worth of an individual by how much they make. No, we measure it by how much the ability of you to absorb it, the retainability. How, how can you absorb ability? How, can you, how much can you absorb? You see, you can, by the way, you can relate to this. You might find somebody who is earning 300,000 Kenyan shillings at the end of the month. This is like um, talk of 2,500 USDs in a month. By the way, this is a quite a huge amount of money in Africa, okay? You find somebody earning this amount of money, but guess how much they save out of these 300,000? You find somebody saving only 70K or 70,000. The rest, 230, is going into... You get what I'm saying? And you can find somebody who is earning a, a salary of 150,000, okay? 150,000, and this guy is able to save similar 70,000. Now, let me tell, let me ask a question. Now, between these two brain, the brain one <laughs> and the brain two, which brain would you pick? Come on, let me repeat. You have somebody who is earning 300,000. This is 0 0.3 million, and the guy is saving 70,000 at the end of the month. Now we have the guy two who is earning 150,000, and the guy is saving 70K. So they're saving similar amount of money. Fine, let me, let, let, let me even say the guy is saving the guy is even saving 50k. Let me make it a little bit tricky. This who is earning 150k is saving 50. This one is earning 300. Is saving 70,000. So which brain would you pick, brain two or brain one? Oh, if you say to brain one, my friend, you need deliverance. You know, brain two is the best. Okay. Now, brain two, it simply means if you were to expose this guy to similar amount of money of 300k, and we assume that he's gonna save at that rate, then this guy has a probability of saving 100k. Therefore, it means he's saving more than the previous guy. That's for a fact. So now, that absorbability, that retainability, is what we say your net worth is now. The question is this. Now, how exactly do you protect your wealth as you grow old? Okay. When I say protect your wealth, some of you guys, especially if you're in Africa, you're thinking about hiding it. You know, well, sure, it may mean hiding it, but on a positive way, not like, you know, avoiding taxes and what have you. Now, how exactly do you do that? I'm going to teach you something today that is quite essential that you should know even before we do anything. All right. And by the way, as I write that thing, have you subscribed to this channel? Or are you just watching me and you have not subscribed my channel? It's like you're stealing my ideas and you're not giving me any credit out there come on just you know like that video and also subscribe down below there and by the way you know why if you do that you'll be notified whenever i upload a new good video because i upload a video each and every day all right let's get to the point because I, I i won't even see whether you are doing so i trust you now <clears throat> this is the point now when we say you see in life when you are young when you are young let's talk of i've ever made about this video when you are talking about for 21 all the way to 45 years eh, at this particular age oh, my pen is starting to jam eh? at this particular age you are, you are focusing on something called growing money okay growing money growing money meaning you are focused on multiplication investing growing it multiplying you get some return you put it back you multiply you expand you invest you expand you invest you expand see you're focusing on growing cash growing growing and growing and growth and that's why i see younger people you get somebody who has some money for the first time you've accessed a million bob or two or three it's your first time in your life you've accessed a million bob then you rush buying a piece of land which is not generating anything you are supposed to focus on expanding the money growing money growing yourself and such kind of things buy an asset that is generating cash flow Come on, you get what I'm saying? Now, as you transit now from 45 and above, 45 years and above now, you focus on what you call storing money. Storing money is what we can say it is doing what? It's actually protecting your wealth, okay? Now, this is the thing that starts at 45. No, it starts all the way since you are. See, the very first principle of you getting money, don't lose it. No matter the age, whether you are young, you are old, or you are very old, the fact remains once you get the money, don't lose it. That's the principle number one. If today I give you 10,000, 
I know there are some of you guys, if I give you 10,000, it won't even see the tomorrow. <laughs> you cannot even survive with money for 48 to 48 hours. You cannot even manage to do exactly that. One person has to sleep in that house. It's either you or the money, but not both of you. Now, you see, you're having a problem. And remember one thing, and never forget this, okay? Never forget these words. A man is always a product of a boy he was. And a woman is always a product of a girl she was. So don't be miserable in terms of your savings and in terms of you storing your money, growing it and retaining it. If you think you're miserable when you're 21, you think by default of me growing old at 40, 45, 50, I'll be. No, just have a prolonged problem. And you can imagine this, you just, you'll just be an old person who has a problem with money. So this is your view protecting your money. First principle is the moment you get paid, can you actually retain that money? Or do you get paid and then you think about spending? You know, there are some people who you give them money, they think they first think first you to spend. Oh, you spend. And if you get the money, you spend. the moment you get some cash, you think about the next mall, where it is. You think about the next clothing, the next whatever. You get a point. So the moment you get the money, ask yourself, okay, fine. I just got paid 100K. I just got paid 10,000. So what exactly can I do with this 10,000 that I have on my pocket? And make it a little bit like 11,000. If it is 10, if it's 100,000, how can I make 10,000 off of this 100,000? That's what you're supposed to think. Now you're thinking about growing money. So by virtue of you growing money, again, it's gone hand in hand with the protection. So protection now, as you grow old, say from 45 and above, at this situation is where now you start to talk about, hey, guess what? What some of the areas where can I keep my money so that I can be able to develop, you know, so that people, you, you, you get what I'm saying? And when you say protection, for example, if you were to take the term protection, protection seems simply means eradication, to eradicate, to eradicate risks or if not eradication, then we mean about we mean about minimizing, minimizing, minimizing. To either eradicate or minimize. That's when you protect. All right. For example, say you have a kid who wanna ride a bike, and you give them the protective gear, you give them the gloves, the knee, uh, the, the knee, whatever we call them, the knee what, the knee protection on the knee pads or the whatever, the whatever. You get what I'm saying? And those traps and what have you. Well, it does not mean that the kid can get harm, but. At least the harm will be at least manageable. That's for a fact. So you are either trying as much as you can to eradicate that. You are trying much to, to eradicate the risk. Because obviously you cannot live in a... Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, the life that is, is good, we, we understand this. See, the life that we live in, we try as much as we can to make sure that we minimize the risks. For example, this boat can actually unhang and maybe knock me on the knee or something of sort. And, and, and as such kind of... I, I mean, like, so what, what we do is that at least place the knee far from the boat. You get what I'm saying? I, you may not have a full control of you ris living in a risk-free life. Because after all, even us, by virtue of us being alive... It's, it's risk by itself. You, you get what I'm saying? But what I mean is protection is to eradicate, either eradicate it if you can, or you do what? You minimize it. Now, so what are the risks can actually be associated with your wealth? Is you losing it? For example, if you engage yourself in things that are like uh, dishonesty, like you acquired your wealth in a dishonest way, like maybe say you are you got an opportunity, you stole from the community, like something of sort, again, you stand chances. For example, if one day you get noticed that's what you used to do, then again, you're going to lose your wealth. Or again, maybe let's say you're having your wealth somewhere, maybe you bought some pieces of properties and then you didn't know how to follow what you call the due diligence and the accreditation or the documents that you have does not really qualify you to be the owner of that piece of property, you might lose it. Then it means not only when you grow your money, not only when, but also when you follow what we call the due diligence. When you follow what we call the due diligence. Say you want to acquire a property, make sure that at least you have the title deed, you know, proof of bought and again the agreement and all those kind of things, or whatever you guys follow in your country, make sure that you follow that thing. So by the time now you say that property is mine, you cannot only say it by the word of mouth, but again, you can back that with documentation. That is protecting your, 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 your wealth. Again, the other thing is to as well put your mind in place. Put your mind in place in the sense that you minimize the things that you are taking as far as the risks are concerned. And obviously you need to take a risk when you grow, but at the same time you need to take what we call a calculated risks. So when you take a calculated risks, it means, yeah, you are risking, yes, but the risk that you are taking is a bit minimized. That is exactly how you go about it. And I always tell people, especially when you hit 45 years and above, you are supposed to think about getting into investments. <clears throat> Again, 
You see, for example, let's take a very simple example here. Say we have you have like six million, okay? Six million Kenyan shillings. Six million Kenyan shillings, and you go buy yourself a property maybe worth 1.5 million, and then the remaining 4.5 million, you build yourself some rentals, okay? <clears throat> what happens is that 1.5 million is a piece of land, 4.5 million you can build yourself like roughly like seven. You need seven units of one bedroom one bedroom obviously it's not from a flat it's not, it's not from, from from you building a, a you know a sort of a story it's just like a, a, a normal a ground one okay now this uh, seven units of one bedroom here you multiply one let's say you you're renting it at seven th eight thousand then you have yourself like fifty six thousand fifty six thousand you deduct the the taxes what 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 maybe you remain like uh, say fifty thousand okay fifty thousand per month now what happens with this for example if someone else goes and takes this six million and invests in something like a pharmacy or maybe let's say health industry or someone takes a similar amount of money and maybe you decide to import things say from china and you start selling or something of so, so you have high chances of making more money when you do that compared to you building can you imagine this you invest six million <clears throat> and you get fifty thousand at the end of the month so this is more of a wealth protection than what we call investment and I want you to look what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see. See, as you transition to becoming an older person, you would rather get this 50,000 that you are sure about, rather than telling you, go get some products from China about construction, get some metals or bars and whatever, you can actually make some money and what have you. You can make a lot of money, I agree, but the chances of you risking this money are actually high and the chances of you losing it obviously is quite high. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? Now, as you grow old, you tend to shift to things that are less risky and obviously they have what a less return so you focus more on investments you focus on things that actually minimizes you losing your money because as you grow old again never forget this this is what we talked about you need cash flow you need cash flow cash 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 is king when you grow old because a lot of things that you'll be needing out there are cash related that is exactly what you should do as you grow old out there so my parting shot on this video is this as you grow old, you're not only to focus on like physically where you should put your money, but also prepare yourself mentally. Rule number one, never lose money. Okay. Rule number two, ask yourself, how can I grow it? And as much as I'm growing it, what are the risk percentages? Okay. And as you do that, then ask yourself, now, protection means eradication or minimizing. Now, how am I minimizing the same? So when you minimize the same is when you follow the due diligence. Is when, by the time you're acquiring a property, you know that you have followed the right procedure. You know have the right documentation. Again, you didn't acquire your wealth in a dishonest way. Because again, if you do so, you're going to live in this life that is always on, on the go. Like anything can just happen. And it can be quite weird when you are old and someone shows up and they say, hey, all this wealth that you acquired was not in the right manner therefore you're gonna lose all of it and maybe it get frozen or something of sort so it is good to make sure that at least you follow the procedure of wealth acquisition wealth storage and investment that way forms that concussion of what we call the protecting your wealth and again i know you might throw some ideas of insurance here sure you can for example say you have some properties you can insure the properties if you have some uh, in terms of your health you can as well insure your health why because your wealth means your wealth your health means your wealth. Why? If you do not insure yourself as you grow old, then it means that you can actually use a lot of money. I haven't you seen some people liquidating their properties for the sake of acquiring their health? Absolutely. So it's good to ensure that. Say you have some cars, you need to insure those cars. Maybe say you have... Um, some properties again you can take some businesses you need to insure them we usually we usually have some have some people we have a great um, radio presenter in kenya who insured uh his uh vocal cords i don't know whether they are vocal cords or the voice i don't know what to insure i don't know whether it's the voice or the vocal cord because the guy eats and drinks whatever gets out of his mouth because he's good at speaking so you ensure exactly that just in case something happens then you can be able to have a soft landing so ensure that what you know very well is quite important and i know you'll be like joseph but did you say that we should not take insurance policy? Policies. See, insurance are great, but don't let them sell you insurance policy on the name of an investment, okay? You can as well support them on other areas like money market fund, balance fund, bond fund, and such greater things. When it comes to insurance, if it's about cars, well and good health, well and good businesses, properties, and all those kind of things, that's, that's amazing. That is exactly how you grow yourself. And guess what? That's my submission, all right? And guess what? I'm saying goodbye. We're believing that by the time you say goodbye, you've actually subscribed to my channel because the importance of that is to get me notified whenever I upload a new good video. Make sure that you do so. And for now, it's a goodbye. And again, don't forget, on 10th of March,
okay, 10th of March this year, I'll be having a one-on-one -on -one session where I teach you all the things that I talk about at a personal level. We do it on a video call. We do this on a Google Meet or a Zoom. We talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. I have a group that will be coming there a specific particular time <clears throat> where we agree. And then we're going to learn things to do with investments, with financial management and whatnot. The package goes for two days, the day one, the day two. The package goes for 2,500. Get that piece and then we talk about businesses and investment for now. By the way, number is always on my description. Number is there and pick it up. Let's talk business for now. So goodbye and see you in the next one.